So, then if we go to the next card, what comes after engagement? Marriage. Just marriage. So the adjustment card <coughs> represents marriages and divorces, oh. represents legal issues, um, jail time, court hearings, um, custody battles, um, signing a paper related to real estate, um, all those kinds of things. Um, so this is a legal <laughs> card. It's, it's a very strong legal card. This is the goddess Mat. And Mat is an Egyptian goddess, and um, it's where we get all the history of, uh, you know, the justice is balanced, you know, so you have two sides of justice, right? So what you've got as symbols on the scales here is Alpha and Omega. If you remember your Latin, Alpha <laughs> is the beginning, Omega is the end, and so, um, you know, there's this balance between the beginning and the end. So, um, the, what I love about the Egyptian mythology related to embalming was they believed that when the king died, the pharaoh died, you had to take his heart out and you had to embalm it to get the water out of it. And it wasn't perfectly balanced unless the heart could balance a feather on a scale. Because they believed that if the pharaoh's heart was heavy, he could not ascend. I think that's an interesting metaphor, isn't it? About if you have a heavy heart, mm -hmm. you cannot ascend, you cannot transcend, you cannot go beyond. And so that's why the forgiveness thing becomes so important. And this card would counsel forgiveness. Like, are you holding a heavy heart? Are you not holding a heavy heart? Um, uh, where is your heart not in balance? Um, and so when you look at her, she's got the sort of truth. Um, but it's, she's on her tippy toes, so she's like this on her tippy toes. Okay, so it's precariously balanced. I mean, she's precariously balanced. So, you know, balance is a, a very touchy thing. I mean, the littlest thing can throw balance off in some way. Um, and again, with the Alpha and the Omega, what I love about it is that um, I learned a long time ago that legal systems have nothing to do with what is right or wrong. Legal systems have to do with karma. Okay, so you can have a person who's totally not guilty get thrown in jail for murder, for life, okay, and they're not guilty. They must have been guilty somewhere, okay, maybe in another life. Maybe in another life they got away with the murder and they got never found out. And so that karma catches up to you as you go along and you don't know why. Do okay. you really think it's karma, or do you think it's just the mistake of a rational jury? It's karma. Because you got that jury because there's some lesson that needed to come back around to you in some way. Now the problem is, you don't know what the lesson is. So one of my, my favorite stories related to this is um, uh, the dearest friend of the Dalai Lama. When he escaped out of India, his friend got captured and thrown in jail for 20 years. So for 20 years, this monk was in a Chinese prison and every day somebody beat him and every day he was beaten he blessed them and they beat him and he blessed them and he beat they beat him and he blessed them and the Dalai Lama was trying everything he could to get his friend out of China and could not do it and totally understood the perfectness of karma that for some reason this man had some sort of karmic lesson that he had chosen to learn this way in whatever reason, the only thing he could do was to keep the doors open in China in some way that the moment that karma was done, he could pull his friend out of there. And it took 20 years. And what happened was, this monk was so loving and so forgiving and so kind that his jailers would stop beating him and then they'd have to replace him and put in another one because he was literally opening and transforming these people that were beating him with his love. You know, so again, did he, was he a bad person in another life? I don't know, but maybe he chose to open these people by doing it this way. You know, that he said, I'm in jail, the only thing I can do is love you. <laughs> the only thing I can do is have abject compassion for you and to not let you magnify the karma towards me. Okay? So I'm going to let the karma go every moment. Every moment I'm going to let the karma go. And sure enough, 20 years he got pulled, he got to be released. And, um, you know, I had friends of mine that actually met him and that he was the sweetest, kindest, most gentle-spoken person 
you'd ever seen. I, I don't think he's alive now, but he was just an absolutely amazing, amazing man. So what I've learned is that I have seen people that have done really bad things never get to go to jail. You know what I mean? Like never go to jail. I mean, it's like the craziest thing. And you know, and I think they must have some big karma plus points from something else so that they're getting to snake this a little bit over here, but it might catch up to them in another lifetime and then vice versa. You know, it's like it comes in some way or some form. And so, I mean, and I've had people that were guilty, didn't get caught, basically talked to somebody about something they did in the past, got convicted for drug dealing when they were no longer drug dealing, but somebody was wearing a wire and they got set up and somebody asked them about drug dealing and they answered the question. They get thrown in jail for drug dealing for seven years in Attica prison and they said, well, you know, I wasn't guilty of that, but I was guilty of a whole bunch of other stuff over here, right? So it's sort of like it all comes out in the wash somewhere, okay, and you don't get to judge or decide how that is. So again, Mott has a mask on because justice is also blind. It's also blind, okay? So, so what you've got here is you've got this big diamond of clarity. You've got this big diamond of clarity. You've got the sword of truth with the waxing and the waning moon on the hilt. You've got the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, so you don't know whether something's the beginning or the end. You don't. You know, is this the beginning of a cycle, the end of a cycle? I mean, what is it? You know, I mean, I had a, a teacher of mine say one time that um, I, I always look at healers, and, um, and she was looking specifically at me, and she said, I sit there and marvel at you, Suzanne. Like, what kind of karma are you walking around with? That you have to write articles and newsletters and thousands of people have to listen to you. And, like, what kind of karma are you carrying that you have to heal that many people? And she says, you know, usually when you have something like that, it has to do with the fact that you murdered a lot of people in another lifetime. And I find some of the best healers in the world have caused a lot of suffering. And so now they have to fix it. So they feel compelled to fix it. And I can find the part of me inside that's probably been a warrior in another lifetime. I mean, I can feel that place that probably has done battle and protected my land. I mean, I can feel that inside of my body. And I'm like, hmm. I, I mean, I can feel even now if somebody came in and tried to hurt somebody I loved, I'd be like, Rrr, you know I mean? So there's that place that's inside of me. So I go, that could be true. That absolutely could be true. So again, I use this as an example to say, don't judge anything because you don't know. I mean, you don't know sometimes. So like, again, when I'm dealing with people in my life, if somebody hurts me in some way, I really let it go because the bottom line is um, I might have owed them something and I, I screwed it up and didn't know I did and or vice versa and if if they took advantage of me then they're gonna owe me the next round and if I'm taking advantage of you then I'm gonna have a concept you know what I mean like it's all gonna work itself out and the more conscious you become the faster it happens so I don't know if you've noticed this but like if I do one little thing wrong I mean the next day sometimes the next hour it happens to me back so fast because I'm more conscious <laughs> and the universe says the game is a game of consciousness. Do you recognize you just did something wrong? And now you're going to feel how it felt. So now we're going to flip it around and there there you go. How'd that feel? Oh yeah, I'm still not going to do that again, right? <laughs> okay. So um, as a result, this is the sign of Libra at the bottom, which is the scales. Okay. Um, so, and this card is blue, which is about truth. And it's got the blue and the green, which is the truth and the heart chakra. Okay. Is the green part the truth? The green part is the heart, and the blue part is the truth. Oh. So, all right. Then, whenever you get married, so this card is about marriage and legal stuff and everything like that. Um, the very next step, did you ever notice when you get married, <laughs> um, everything's good for about a year, right? You know, so everything's pretty good for about a year in a relationship. And then all of a sudden, you kind of pull back and pull in because when you fall in love, or in infatuated love, when you fall in love, um, you lose your boundaries. <laughs> and inevitably, you have to get your boundaries back.